Okay, good evening everyone. I'd like to call to order this uh, committee of the whole meeting of the Council of the Town of Soggy and Shores and welcome everybody uh, to the Council Chambers this evening. I'm glad you're here. Uh, first item, second item is disclosures of pecuniary interest. And I'll ask any member if you have a pecuniary interest to declare at this time. See any? So of course you can declare one at any time if you need to. We don't have additions, deletions or amendments. So that moves us on to item four, which is the open forum. If we've changed the uh, format a little bit uh, now after some changes at our last meeting. So now open forum will uh, form part of the regular committee, the whole agenda. We do have one uh, open forum um, delegation, if you like, and uh, it's from Mr. John Mann. So uh, come on up, John, and uh, you've got three minutes. Thanks, Your Honor. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm glad it's uh, on the webcast finally, so I pre appreciate that. Um, I just need some clarification. Um, I filed a delegation on February 13th. Um, I found out today at 417, I just happened to check my messages at 516. 417 today, I got a message from the clerk. Uh, my delegation's not on tonight because of the six month rule, 14.11. Council passed that rule. Uh, stop right now if you want to repeal it tell me you're going to repeal it I can stop right now otherwise uh, I need clarification um, who, who makes that decision under 14.11 and can any of the council tell me that you, you, can, you, can, you can't tell me that uh, what factors go into the 14.11 same topic because I, I don't agree with the same topic. No, nothing? There's no response by, by any of you? Um, and uh, there's no participation by me or any citizen or resident that's trying to make a delegation. Is that right? No, no response? Uh, and how, how do I get permission to get to have my delegation? Just add seven more minutes to this thing. Can anyone clarify that? There's no, there's no, there's no procedure, is there? I just need to clarify these things for the record, and I'm glad it's on the webcast. Um, my next question is uh, the twenty-five thousand dollar bond. Has that been posted? Citizens uh, and residents and persons concerned with sogging are not privy to that. Because if the twenty-five thousand dollar bond has not been posted for the buses. They should be removed immediately and charged under the bylaw, as you, as was promised. Uh, I note there's only one delegation tonight, so I'm not under a three delegation rule, and I can live with a three delegation rule. But that 14.11 rule, and apparently, it's an arbitrary, no factor decision by an unelected official, the clerk only, with no procedure to get permission that's provided under the bylaw and there's no give and take here you know <laughs> I don't know why you people want to be elected officials no debate it's embarrassing oh but I can call you I can call you I want to be on the public forum so the citizens and residents can do that Thank you, Mr. Mann. That's your three minutes. But your, your, the three-minute rule. Thank you very much, Mr. Mann. We're going to move on in the agenda. Thank you. I appreciate so it. So that moves us on to item seven. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, pardon me. Uh, so uh, we did have one delegation uh, on the agenda uh, this evening, Mr. Terry Ackerman. But unfortunately, Mr. Ackerman could not be here uh, this evening because of the weather. Um, so, uh, we do not, as it turns out, have any delegations this evening. So we'll move on, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll move on, uh, in the agenda to report of municipal officers and committees and down to 7.3 infrastructure and development. And the first staff report is the parking bylaw update. And we'll turn it over to the director of infrastructure and development, uh, for the report. Thank you. And through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just want to start by saying I've done it as a PowerPoint presentation here just because of the background. So um, this should give you some 
more knowledge going into the discussion that we're going to have later. It's not necessarily the, the level you'll see for every time I update the parking bylaw. So Lambert Lane is a small lane down in Southampton. Uh, one side is the lake, the other side is a lane. Um, it was reconstructed in 2017, 2018. That reconstruction started as a water main job, but it included storm sewer, curb and gutter because of known drainage concerns with the residents on the west side of the road. The right of way property is only six meters wide and the east side of the cove has sections that are only 10 centimeters off the property line. Surface works and storm uh, water, like I said, was done to combat drainage concerns. When the parking or when the construction was over, staff were erecting the no parking signs, and that's when the residents started to um, come out and ask that that be stopped. So we did stop, and we went back and uh, talked with the residents, and went back through our notes to figure out when the parking bylaw had been changed. We found out that that was in 2013. And it was because of an overall review of these lanes and the bylaw was passed so that parking would be prohibited on both sides of a street where width restrictions existed. There are 14 such lanes in Southampton. Staff also recommended that the signs be installed as needed or as appropriate because of the cost implication of putting signs every 50 meters on all these locations. So when the road was reconstructed, staff in 2017 felt that that was the time to put the no parking signs up. When we do a reconstruction job, we do go back through the bylaws and make sure that our signage is in accordance with that when we put it back in. The communication through this project, so as I said, it started when the residents had confronted town crew installing signs, who had then contacted the staff and then contacted the office. So we decided quickly to convene a meeting with council and the residents as well. Because it was late in the summer, we knew many of them were going to be going home. On August 17th, we met with as many neighbors as we could get. Uh, we sent out emails and then asked them to spread the word. We had residents of Lambert Lane as well as Macaulay Lane, members from the Southampton Residents Association, engineering staff and counselors there. The concerns that were raised were they thought that it would be a better solution to have a one-way street. Other people thought it was difficult to reverse order their driveways when there are cars parked on the streets. There was a disbelief that the fire truck was actually an issue. Other owners were upset that cars would drive over the curb and then would be on their privately owned property. They wanted to not citify the streets. They wanted to make sure that they keep the small cottage feel instead of having the urban feel down the streets. They also felt that parked cars would reduce the uh, speeding potential. They recognized there was unfamiliar drivers that got caught down on, on Lambert Lane and they didn't like the location of the signs. So from this meeting, we had committed to reviewing the um, minutes and their concerns. We did say that we proposed to keep the parking restriction, that we would meet with anybody with impacted properties and try to come up with things that they could do and that we would go back to them with expectations and timelines for compliance. We also asked that they review their own situations and reach out to us if they wanted more help. So the first one to keep the parking restrictions. So this is the bylaw here that we're bringing forward. The circulating minutes of the meetings. So we did that by email and by uh, standard mail. Impact, reviewing the impact. We did again by email and mail. So we walked the site and then sent out specific letters to each resident saying what we recognized would be on their property and if they wanted more advice to come back. It's a fine line as a uh, professional engineer to give advice so I didn't give them consulting advice, just recognize that their lots may be trickier than others. The residents reviewing their situation and determining a preferred solution. So we had proposals come back from one owner about applying it to the entire street. We uh, met on site with another resident. Uh, we looked at specific costs and options for uh, another one and then uh, another gentleman had asked that I get the signs out there immediately. So we've had I'd say five or six of properties back and forth. So the options that were identified, so you can park legally on Adelaide and Peel Street. So if someone wanted to park overnight, it is off Lambert Lane, but there's options there. Retrofitting their own property to provide the parking on their property. Or there'd be no town concern if there was an agreement between people to have parking on the east side that was owned by somebody else. If you came back and forth, we don't have a bylaw that would prohibit 
that uh, agreement that may become a problem if there's commercial gains in that, but we, we are not worried about that. What the residents identified was they would like to allow a car to be half parked on the asphalt and half on the boulevard so that they would have a dotted line around there designating that smaller lane as a parking lane. Um, they wanted to convert the street to a one-way street, thinking that that could then reduce the potential of cars crossing or just leave it in its original condition and allow and accept the substandard condition to continue. So when we re reviewed the proposed um, partial on-street parking, this one was of interest to us. We did take, spend a lot of time looking through what we could do. When you do it, we only have half a meter on the one side. So anything we would do, we would need to stick to the half meter, we, which really still constricted the asphalt width and we still couldn't make the fire department work. Otherwise, we would have parking on private property. So we didn't want to cross that line of having public property or public parking on uh, our not town owned land. We talked to Basra to figure out how wide their garbage truck is, how much room they need to actually be standing and sorting the, the material on the truck. We talked with the fire about needing to put the equipment out and being able to access the truck and use it as well. Um, we just found that there wasn't a good, a, it wasn't a good enough solution that would work. So we came back, refined our proposal to allow residents a loading and unloading provision. And the uh, parking bylaw has a 15 minute one in there. So we um, proposed to adopt that in the same location. We are going to remove a hydrant that's at 221 Lambert Lane and um, confirmed with fire that there's enough length of hose that we can make that work so it doesn't meet the standard 150 meter hydrant spacing but through the the use of the, the hoses and the pressures are good down there that we can actually still make that work uh, we will allow parallel parking on the boulevard so off the asphalt but within that half meter distance allow someone to park in our right of way which would lessen the impact on their property they, they get a half meter where they don't need to do any regrading on their stuff. We would also look at the uh, nuclear waste management organization and the tree fund where there's a motion put forward a few years ago to spend that money on street trees, on the interest of that money on street trees in reconstruction projects. We would look at compensating um, the removal of these cedar trees with, through that fund. Plus we would let, we would give everybody a permit that would show the legal um, parallel parking and we wouldn't charge the normal driveway permit fee to get that, but that would show people purchasing that property in the future that yes, they're legally allowed to park parallel and use part of the town. So our conclusions were that there's been significant effort uh, discussing this with residents and staff and counselors. Um, currently the residents are uh, using the municipal property for their exclusive use by parking. The 5.5 driving surface is required for fire trucks and for recycling. Making the lane a one-way didn't accomplish the minimum widths that we were required above. Removal of the fire hydrant is, uh, can be accommodated through the existing equipment. And that uh, we felt that these concessions being made on this property could be applied to um, the other lanes. We feel what we do here has a potential to be precedent setting for any other location. So we recommend updating the parking bylaw to include Lambert Lane as a 15-minute loading allow the parallel parking within the boulevard on Lambert Lane from Albert or from Adelaide to Peel. The town will cover the cost of trees to be planted, uh, of trees that were removed. This is obviously within reason. We, we aren't looking at planting uh, very mature trees. We're going to do what we can. Cover the cost of driveway permits um, and removal of the, the fire hydrant and the provision is there. This it was just a, a sketch just so understand the impacted properties are on the north end and the west side from number 225 down to have the potential for works needed all right thank you very much the recommendation is that council pass a bylaw to authorize an amendment to the parking bylaw 51 2013 I'll ask members if they have any questions or comments councillor Smith Thank you, Marin. Through you, if you could just uh, perhaps uh, clarify the 15-minute benchmark that's been used. Is this uh, a provincially recognized standard, or is there any flexibility with that in terms of relief? 
For you, I'm not sure about it being provincially standard. It's what we have in our bylaw currently. Is a 15 minute. I know in, in larger cities there are loading and unloading of longer time frames. We we didn't have that. Um, we could, uh, I guess, we could update the bylaw, or I can come back and, and confirm if we have. Councillor Grace. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, I have a number of comments on this. Um, I've been. And some of our other members uh, of council from Southampton have been working on this issue for a couple of years. Uh, first, I want to say that I really appreciate the time that staff has given me and other council members and the residents on this issue. It's been um, very generous. Um, and uh, Amanda has given you the background, um, but I do want to emphasize that I, I understand the need for providing access for our emergency and utility vehicles on not just this lane, but any lanes in, that are similar to this. And with regard to this proposed bylaw, uh, the bylaw amendments, I support the second and third sections of the proposed bylaw, referring to um, designated disabled parking spaces and fire routes. Um, I'm going to be asking for um, staff to go back and um, revise the recommendations for the proposed Lambert Lane amendments, um, and I want to just talk about some of my reasons for that. Um, I believe that as a municipality, and I'm including myself in that, um, as an elected official who was uh, involved in some of the discussions, that we bear some responsibility for what I think is an exceptional situation uh, that's developed on Lambert Lane. Um, we did not provide adequate notice as a municipality to property owners on Lambert Lane in 2013, uh, either before or after the no parking bylaw was passed, which has created uh, this situation, whether it's necessary or not. Um, we also didn't enforce that parking bylaw for five years. And we didn't fully consider the effects that the construction project of 2017 and 18 would have upon the parking situation on Lambert Lane. Um, and so we, and we did not uh, communicate the effects to the residents uh, who've been parking their vehicles on Lambert Lane without repercussions in some cases for decades. Um, we have a zoning policy that allows non-compliant, what we call legal non-compliant structures or buildings um, that were built um, years ago in many cases um, and were built legally. Uh, but now according to our current zoning policy, um, they don't apply. But what our policy is uh, in our planning documents is essentially to allow those to stay. So if somebody has a, a shed or a garage or something that's technically not legal, um, unless they come to us and ask for some kind of change in that property, like a renovation or a new build, we don't require them to move that. Um, and in a way, I th and, and I think the justification for that is that the municipality is accepting that residents acted legally years ago when they did that. That was their intent to act legally um, and that it's not fair to impose new standards uh, when somebody uh, acted legally in the past. And I think that that policy applies to the affected properties on Lambert Lane. The properties were constructed in some cases um, almost 100 years ago. Um, without on-site parking decades ago. Uh, now conditions have changed, um, people have more cars, cars are bigger, um, and, but the point is, is that we allowed these people to park on the street without penalty or without notification of penalty for decades until last summer. So there are, by my reckoning, about six properties along Lambert Lane which have no on-site parking. And we're giving these people three choices. One is, in some cases, to pay potentially thousands of dollars to create a parking space on their property, even though we're, we're allowing them to use uh, part of our property on the boulevard and allowing them to use uh, parallel parking. Uh, in some of those cases, if you have gone down to Lambert Lane, you'll see that there are a couple in particular that have 
significant grading drops just off the road. And so uh, those people are very afraid of, you know, what they'll have to encounter in terms of uh, creating a parking space on their, on their property, which is not at the level of, of the road. Um, how much will it cost them to fill that in? What effect will that have upon um, their cottage uh, and the drainage and, you know, all of those things? In another case, um, you saw a letter, I believe, today that was sent to you today about somebody who has, who bought the property with already existing expensive um, landscaping and amenities, including a hot tub, um, that will be affected by if, you know, their choice is, what do they do? They rip up that expensive decking. Maybe they'll have to do that. But um, my point is, is it could be potentially very expensive for them. Um, another choice is for them to park on a neighboring street, like Macaulay, like Adelaide, maybe Peel, um, which is very inconvenient, or to make private arrangements with another resident to share their parking space. Um, and we're talking about people who at this point anyway are seasonal residents. Um, as we know, our summers are already very, very busy. Uh, parking is at a premium. And, um, you know, practically speaking, I think it's going to be very difficult for, for residents to find uh, parking, uh, to make a parking arrangement. I think that would be, be hard to do. Um, staff uh, maintains that our action on Lambert is precedent-setting, precedent and I think uh, in a way it is, but I also believe this is an exceptional situation um, because of the limited choices of these affected properties. Um, I have looked at, at the other lanes, and I think in most cases, at least in Southampton, but this is a a municipally, a, 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 um, a situation that applies across the municipality, both in the township cottage areas in Port Elgin. Um, I think in most cases there's on-site parking, even if it's a narrow lane um, with restricted parking being a good idea. Um, in the case of Burns Lane, for instance, there are a couple of properties there. That's the lane that... Um, uh, borders on the west side of the tennis club in Southampton. Um, there are a couple of properties there that don't have on-site parking, but because of the tennis club and the fact that there's this sloping lawn, uh, you don't have the same pressures with having a strip of homes on the opposite side. Um, and so I think Lambert is really unusual, and I'm asking for you to think about that um, as we go forward. Um, I'm hoping that through Lambert we can apply some of the lessons that we've learned here to similar situations throughout the municipality because as time goes on and as our infrastructure needs increase, um, we're going to be facing this over and over and I think we should look at this as an opportunity to see the lessons learned here, to apply them in the future and to take the opportunity to reevaluate um, the relevant sections of the 2013 parking bylaw, uh, specifically which apply to parking on these kinds of residential lanes. With regard to the 15-minute loading and unloading time limit requested here, I would ask that we lengthen that time. Um, I think it's, yes, it's possible, uh, but I think it puts undue stress upon those residents, some of whom are elderly, some who may have disabilities. Um, to race in and out of their cars, unpacking maybe for the whole summer, or for the duration of their stay. Um, and, and I'm hoping we can be flexible and increase that length. So with that in mind, I do have a motion that I prepared. Um, and um, I'll ask uh, our mayor for direction on how we should proceed with that. Thank you, Councillor. The, um, so there is, a res there is a resolution here moved by Councillor Grace and seconded by Councillor Rich, so we'll consider it on the floor. Um, I would just say if this uh, were to carry, just for clarity, that it would represent a deferral of the main resolution. So um, I think we would just take that. It doesn't, it doesn't talk about deferral in here, but that's how we would take it. 
uh, just to be clear. So it has been moved that staff be directed to consider revisions of the amendments one and two to parking bylaw 51 2013 according to these specific suggestions. One, to increase the 15 minute loading and unloading time restriction to allow for residents to access their properties without undue stress. Two, to explore options for the municipality to lessen significant financial burdens on the affected property owners through appropriate means. And three, to review and update the policy and procedure related to residential lanes listed within Schedule B of Bylaw 51 2013, parking prohibited at all times. That uh, is moved and seconded, and uh, so I'll ask uh, if there's any discussion to that resolution. Is everybody clear on what it's suggesting? Councillor uh, Mayette. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just the one question for the mover is, do you have a proposed amount of time that you would think appropriate for loading and unloading? An hour, two hours, something like that? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I thought I'd leave that up to staff. I mean, I, I an hour would be great, um, but, and I think an hour might be a good time period because if we go much more over an hour, we're talking about people parking uh, not really to load or unload, but to um, go to the beach, um, which is, a, you know, that's a short period of time. That would give people enough time, but I really didn't want to prescribe that. I thought maybe staff, unless staff really wants us to come back with a specific time, but um, I just think 15 minutes is way too short. Okay. Further uh, questions for clarification or comments or Anything with regard to that resolution? So, um, so everybody understands. I'll take a vote on this, but if this carries, um, then that will represent a, a deferral of the motion and a direction to the administration to consider these three points that are in this resolution, and then they will return uh, following, following that with recommendations for us on the basis of, of this direction. Clear? So I'll ask all in favor. Okay, thank you very much. Then that moves on to the next item, which is a staff report on the tree canopy policy and the Director of Infrastructure and Development. Thank you and through you, Mr. Mayor. The tree canopy policy is required to be included in our policies through changes to the Municipal Act. It is to protect and enhance the tree canopy and natural vegetation. This policy describes the policies already in place and in practice by the town that are contained in other documents such as the official plan and design manuals. Recommendation is that Council adopt the tree canopy policy. Questions or comments from members of the committee? Council Grace. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, through you. Um, looking through the policy as it's written, um, it seems like the policy just applies to new development. Um, is am I correct? Through you, it is predominantly about development, but in the OP, it does recognize that in our reconstruction projects, we should also uh, review tree canopy and that those things as well. Okay, but it is predominantly for development. Okay, uh, follow up question. Um, do we have uh, a policy about planting new trees or replacing trees on town property like in our parks or along our streets? So through you, um, for road reconstructions, we have a practice where if a tree comes down, we normally ask the homeowner uh, adjacent to that tree if they would like that tree planted on their private property instead of back in the right-of-way keeps it farther away from the infrastructure so we do that as we go along there are homeowners that would not like it but there are those that do and then through this nuclear waste management uh, organization we are looking at putting trees in areas where we they would not interfere with infrastructure so there's those two practices um, I'll refer to, to Jane about the parks though Yeah, I was just going to say there's no official policy for planting trees within our parks. However, I can tell you over the last number of years, we've we've planted a tremendous amount of trees within our parks. Um, we're particularly cognizant of when we lose trees in parks and we replant those. But we've got some great partnerships over the last number of years that enhanced our tree can canopy within our parks. 
Sorry, I have another follow-up. Um, so if I could just give you a, a hypothetical and you could maybe tell me how this might apply to, um, how this new policy might apply. Um, a lot um, within a residential area which um, was quite heavily treed um, is uh, in the course of um, severing a, that large lot and uh, preparing to construct two homes on that lot. Um, many trees, the majority, vast majority of trees were taken down. Uh, it's in a treed cottagey area. Um, and is there anything within this new policy that would help to prevent that? You, the, uh, it depends on where it is. So if it's in our OP under a significant woodlands area, then they need to hire uh, an environmentalist to do an environmental impact study. So those areas, that has to be done. And then with that, there would either be a tree compensation plan prepared by the developer or um, the development would be scaled back so that there was no negative impact based on the EIS. If it's in an area without that, then there's not. But we, when it goes to site plan, that's when we put in the agreement to have trees. If it just is a severance, sometimes we can implement it as conditions, but that's not typically done. These are, this isn't a new policy. This is just restating what we already have. When we look at the OP this summer, it can be one of those things that uh, gets incorporated in that area of study has to be in, uh, implemented into the new OP. Oh, my last question. Um, is this something that, uh, what we're presented with here uh, as a resolution, is this what is going to go forward or um, are you and Jay still open to uh, like I was just looking at the town of the Blue Mountains policy, for instance, and it's quite comprehensive. Is this something that can be uh, worked on still? It, it is. This is what we have already in place, and this is what we're presenting as the policy moving forward. It's not in the work plan for 2019 to look at um, a detailed tree canopy study, but it could be something that comes out of the OP review, and in that case it would be something that we would implement in 2020. Okay. Thank you. Further questions or comments? I don't see any, so all in favor? It's carried. All right, and that takes us then on to a staff report on the Kincardine Boundary Agreement and the Director of Infrastructure and Development. Thank you, and through you, I feel like I'm a, a microphone hog today. <laughs> so this is a simple one. Uh, Kincardine and Saugeen Shores has an agreement to maintain the town line between the two municipalities. It has shared ownership. They own one half, we own the other. Uh, in the end, we do the maintenance for the west side down to where it's no longer a dirt road and they pay us for that service. They do a section where their plows are out and we pay them for that service. You so I have a recommendation that Council pass a bylaw to authorize a boundary road agreement between the municipality of Kincardin and the town of Saugeen Shores. Questions or comments? See any? All in favor then? That's carried. All right, and then that takes us on to item 7.4, Community Services, Parks and Recreation Report, and a staff report on the naming of the Outdoor Sports Complex and the Director of Community Services. Thank you. Uh, this evening we're looking at formally naming the Le Lamont Pit Lands to the Lamont Sports Park. Uh, I want to let you know that staff have certainly consulted with the Lamont family and Harold Sutherland representatives, and they are... Uh, they feel the name is a positive name and moving forward. Uh, it's also important to note that this naming right does not preclude future naming opportunities of components within the park as we work through our fundraising initiatives for the, um, the development of the, the parkland. We have a recommendation that Council pass a bylaw authorizing the name of the outdoor sports complex lands located at 300 Concession 6 as the Lamont Sports Park. Questions or comments from members? The Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, I think this is a, a great name for the facility. It was part of the purchase agreement with the uh, Harold Sutherland, and knowing the Lamonts and their history of sports in town, I think this is a good tribute to uh, Mr. Lamont, and I, I totally support this. Okay, thank you. Further questions uh, or comments? No, I, I certainly agree with the Deputy Mayor. It's, uh, it's good to see uh, the formal name uh, for the park uh, come forward and I, this uh, means probably that we can get started with uh, 
um, actually working with the park and, uh, and talking about those naming rights for some of those other facilities that might get built within is, uh, is a nice thing to raise too because I think uh, we're certainly going to be, as we uh, start designing the park and uh, working our way through to construction, we're going to be looking for partners across the community to help us to build some of those uh, features and to uh, upgrade some of those features. And uh, um, so it's an exciting development and I'm glad to, glad to see it before us tonight. So if there's nothing further, all in favor. That is carried. So that moves us on down. There's uh, communications and petitions for committee of the whole information, and there are six items there. Questions or comments with any of those? So we'll just move right on down then to item nine, reports of department heads. And um, the first one is an information report on the rooftop unit at the Southampton Town Hall. Does the director have any comments? No. Any questions or comments on that one from members? No. Okay. Uh, there's an information report on Bruce Roads 25 and 33. Uh, comments at all? Amanda, to that uh, one? No. Are there any questions from members? No. Okay. Uh, then that moves us on down to item three, an information report on the labor shortage discussion. Uh, sir, Jessica's not here, so she won't be able to update. So just, uh, I'll just comment that I'm looking forward to seeing to that uh, uh, open house. The staff's done a great job on uh, organizing it. Got some really exciting people to come speak at it, uh, and uh, I think it's really uh, good that the municipality has taken the bull by the horns a bit on this issue. And uh, I don't think we have all the solutions to this problem by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, um, having the discussion is important. So I really appreciate the work that. Uh, the manager of strategic initiatives and others have done on that. And item four, and I suspect we uh, do have uh, some comments on this one, is the information report on the website launch. And we'll turn it over to Laura Moscone, the communications specialist. Laura. Thank you, and through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we're very excited about the launch of our new website. Uh, so I wanted to come here today and just demonstrate a few of the tools that we have available to us now. Uh, so you can see on the screen here, this is our uh, new redesigned home page. Uh, so we've made a few changes, um, obviously the design. Uh, the menus have also been reorganized so that it brings some of the more popular pages um, to the front so they're a little bit more easy to access. So for example, the pool page is within one click from the home page, whereas on our previous website it was quite buried. Uh, the home page is also designed to showcase um, any opportunities we'd like, whether it's a survey we're doing or um, any sort of public engagement, something timely, a page we want to highlight. Uh, so as you can see here in the Explore and Play menu, we have a menu image. These can be added to any menu and changed at any time. Uh, down the home page, we feature our news items here. We have some calls to actions. And then we have these featured items here. Um, so these are a great option when we're doing public engagement to change one of these out. So for example, the cannabis survey, um, we could showcase right on our home page. Uh, the home page also below here shows um, current events coming up, uh, news and announcements, and the public meetings that are coming up also. I'll switch over to an interior page here. This is our building and renovating page. Uh, so as you can see, there's always a search bar on the top here if you want to move around that way. And down at the bottom under the menu, we always have contact information. Uh, one tool that I wanted to show off on here is our new accordion feature. So when we have pages that have a lot of content, uh, this helps to organize it without overwhelming the viewer. Uh, so here, if you want to know how to obtain a building permit, you click here, you get the information. If you don't want to know, you don't need to read through it. Um, another feature that I wanted to point out was how uh, responsive it is to screen size. So it is tablet and mobile friendly. So if I just minimize this here, you can see as I move the screen over, it responds to that. So that would be what it would look like on a tablet. And then if I move it further, you're seeing exactly what you're going to see on your phone. Uh, we also have a number of really neat tools. Uh, we call them modules. So I'll show you our parks and facilities module. Here, uh, the user can explore our parks and facilities online. 
Um, they can search by the type of facility they'd like to look for. Uh, they can view them on the map and also in a listing. So for example, if I want to uh, look for ball diamonds, I can check that off. There's also an advanced search if you want to search by amenities, capacities, other features. Uh, but we'll just look at ball diamonds, I'll search for that. And you can see here that they show up exactly where they are on the map. Um, and you can look at them here for more information. So this Beaner uh, ball diamonds, you can see the location, description, the status. We can change these as needed. If, for example, they're closed due to rain that day, we can close them. Um, these we have marked closed for the season. Uh, it shows many of these features and, again, the location. Uh, another neat feature is our calendar. Although we did have a calendar on the previous website, uh, this is definitely new and improved. Um, so you can see we have events and we also have our programs calendar. You can see all of them listed in the calendar view as well as a listing again. And you can filter these. So I'll just update the calendar and we'll look. And these are all our swimming opportunities coming up in February. Um, it also has a neat feature where once you have it filtered to what you want, uh, you can actually print it or just create a printable PDF. Um, and then you can filter to exactly what you want and print a calendar to put up on your fridge. And then finally, oh, sorry, and just also with the calendar, we all are accepting uh, public submissions of events. They will go through an approval process before they're put onto our calendar. Uh, the final tool that I did want to show you is a report of concern form. This is created using our new form builder tool. Uh, it gives us the option to create uh, applications, surveys, public engagement forms of any type. Uh, so we've used it to create this report of concern form, which allows residents and visitors to report any issues they have online rather than giving us a call or coming into the office. So it's just another option for them. Um, you'll see here as an example, I've chosen road sign issue. That brings up this second option of exactly what it is, or I can say other. I would fill in the rest of the information, including putting in photos, that sort of thing. Um, when that's submitted, it actually goes directly to the department that is affected. Uh, so if it's for example, I had chosen a parks and trails issue, it would go to community services, whereas road sign would go to the administrative assistant in infrastructure and development. And then from there, they put it into our service request system, just as they would a phone call or if someone came into the office. So that's uh, just a taste of some of the features that we have on our new website. Um, I also wanted to mention along with those features, it comes with some really great tools to ensure that we're keeping everything on the website accessible. Um, and we've also updated all of our content to ensure um, that it's written in plain language, updated and easy to understand. Uh, we've also implemented some new internal processes and page, page ownership uh, to ensure that we stay on the right track in the future. Uh, thank you, and I'd ha be happy to answer any questions. Questions or comments from members? We'll start with Councilor Grayson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Laura, for the report and for the changes on the website. I don't have any questions. I just wanted to say that today I used the report of concern because uh, there was a big tree down across uh, Peel Street, ironically, just west of Lambert Lane, and uh, somebody sent me a picture. And uh, I put it in, and within an hour, I got a, a note back from Candace saying that the crew was out there cleaning it up, and it was very easy to use, obviously very efficient. Councilor Mayette. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And also, Laura, I, I had a chance to go through the site, and I, I agree that there are a lot of great changes because I think uh, it was well overdue because the last site was uh, sometimes frustrating to try and navigate around. Um, with the, that last section, report of concern, I, did, I haven't used it yet. Um, but don't you think like we have we have the work reporting system now, which I think all councillors have access to, so we can put in a you know a, a re work request for any substandard condition that we might have either come across personally or have reported to us. Don't you think this might 
reasonably overwhelm the department heads sometimes if everybody in the community can essentially put in a work request? Right. If I was a department head, especially one on roads and public works, I'd be, uh, I'd be a bit afraid that I'm going to be getting flooded with everybody's pet peeve on this. For you, Mr. Mayor, um, that was a concern, but when we looked at it, we realized um, it's not something that's necessarily going to increase our uh, reports. It's really just another opportunity for people to report them rather than picking up the phone. Some people don't like to do that. A lot of people have said they expect to be able to report online. Uh, so this is just another way they can do that. Um, certainly, it's treated the same way a phone call or someone work coming in person, it would be treated, and it is put in through our service management system and prioritized as it should be. Should I then be using this system going forward or should I use my access to the service management system, the work request system? Uh, I would say you can continue using your access to our SRM system. Um, this is just a step for the public who don't have access to that. Were there uh, questions or uh, comments from members? I think this is uh, really well done, Laura. I appreciate uh, very much all of your uh, work on uh, doing this. Is a, this is a, was a big undertaking, uh, I know, and uh, a lot of good work uh, went into it. I think that it's wise, it would be wise of us to start thinking uh, now, now that we have the new site uh, up and running, about what happens next in terms of maintenance. Uh, I always think uh, we sometimes, with websites, uh, we always, frankly, with websites, municipal sites, is we build them and then we forget about them and we revisit them in 10 years after they're uh, in Internet years about 1,000 years old, right? So I think, um, you know, we would be wise at council uh, and the administration to start thinking about investing in these on an ongoing basis, keeping them up to date, continuing to put money into them. This, this, this just keeps moving forward, uh, this technology, and, uh, and we need to keep up with whatever the latest... Uh, um, thing is so that we can uh, keep it up to date and we don't end up and perhaps that would in the long run prevent us from having to make very large extremely large investments uh, once every 10 years and, um, and and instead invest continuously so I think um, you've got us in a good place uh, today and uh, and um, hopefully we can stay in a good place so thank you very much we appreciate it so, so that moves us on to that's the end of the reports of department heads, so we'll just uh, go around and do announcements by members. Uh, we'll start with the deputy mayor. Do you have anything uh, this evening? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> I had the privilege of attending the Just Ask presentation and premiere at the uh, Bruce County Museum on Saturday when you weren't busy elsewhere, and we had some great uh, presentations by the kids on the on this new um, show put out by Eastlink, and I look forward to seeing it. They're looking at. Uh, getting some more candidates to be on there and hopefully starting to broadcast it in the fall. And thank you for attending that on my behalf. Councillor Smith? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I would just like to recognize that next week we'll be celebrating International Women's Day. Uh, the International Women's Day campaign theme for 2019 is Balance for Better, and it's a call to action for driving gender balance across the world. There are a number of events here in Sogging Shores, and I'd just like to highlight a couple, the first of which would be the networking event hosted by the Sogging Shores Chamber of Commerce, as well as an event celebrating the exploration of women changing the world by embracing collaboration and social entrepreneurship. Um, and this event is hosted with proceeds going to the Women's House serving Gray and Bruce County. Thank you. Councillor Rich. Councillor Grace. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so this uh, term, um, the Vice Deputy Mayor Myatt and I are serving as reps on the Saugeen Valley Conservation Authority. And um, the agendas are fairly heavy to go through, but I just wanted to... Um, uh, talk about a couple of things regarding conservation education and uh, the support that we get from corporations and also uh, from the Saugeen Valley Conservation Authority itself, um, specifically for outdoor winter programming. Uh, so there's a program called DEER, D-E-E-R, uh, which um, is sponsored by Bruce Power. 
and they sponsor 50 full days of free conservation education programs, including busing for all schools in the Blue Water District and Bruce Gray Catholic School District boards um, through the Conservation Authority staff. Um, and I just thought that was amazing and wanted to mention that. Um, there's also another program called Winter Conservation Education, which is uh, handled by uh, the staff, and, and so that allows uh, students, uh, both grades four to eight and also kindergarten students who um, uh, can go through the trails at Sulphur Spring on snowshoes, being uh, winter detectives and um, all kinds of things. Um, there's a Flood Waters and New Student Safety Program uh, that starts in mid-February. And uh, that is a hands-on curriculum-based program that takes place in uh, schools throughout the watershed during March and April. And finally, sponsored by Enbridge is Earth Week 2019. Um, and so that is uh, education um, related to Earth Week, which is uh, available throughout all the Saugeen Valley Conservation Authority schools. So. Um, Anyway, we're fortunate to have that support, and I just wanted to bring it to the public's attention. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Carr. Councillor Mayette. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just one thing. <clears throat> um, earlier this month, the community of Port Elgin, Saugeen Shores, lost an important uh, individual by the name of Jim Benj. And I went to a celebration of life of his on Saturday, and it was attended by many. Uh, Jim was uh, a close, a, a good friend of mine, uh, primarily through his work as a founding member of the Lake Huron Fishing Club and uh, one of the builders of the Port Elgin Salmon Hatchery. And uh, if a man's life is measured by the amount of life that he created, his would be measured in the millions because there were millions of salmon that had been produced out of that hatchery over his 40 years or so of work on that, I think. So I'd just like to mention his passing. I just wanted to say a word of thanks to a local business uh, come to my attention that on uh, Sunday morning or in the early hours of Sunday morning there was a, a fire at an apartment building on Waterloo Street in Port Elgin uh, and uh, as a result of that fire a number of tenants in the apartment were displaced uh, from their homes and the uh, the um, police put out a call to the All Seasons Motel in in downtown Port Elgin to help out those uh, displaced citizens and they uh, they jumped right to do that, provided uh, some rooms for those uh, folks to, uh, to, um, to help them out in their hour of need. So I just wanted to say uh, thank you from the entire municipality to the, uh, to the owners of the All Seasons Motel. So with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Councillor Grace, seconded by the Deputy Mayor, all in favour. We'll reconvene at uh, oh, uh, 7.35.